Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel where today we're doing a stock bits video. And stock bits videos aim to find companies that are innovating in some way and give you a brief overview in under 10 minutes. I can already tell that this one's going to run longer than 10 minutes just because there's so much that I like about this company, Desktop Metal. Now, when I say stuff that I like about the company, I'm talking purely from an innovation standpoint, purely from a this is cool standpoint not from a finance standpoint, not from a this is a stock to buy today standpoint. And that's because, well, there's a lot going on on that finance side. Very briefly covering it, this is a company that does $16.5 million in revenues, but trades with a market cap of $3.2 billion. It's been north of $5 billion as well. That means this company has a 200 times price to sales multiple on, on those trailing sales. There is a lot that has to go right for this company to succeed. And yeah, that's not the topic of this video. The topic of this video is to talk about what this company does and why it's innovative. So let's dive into that. So what does desktop metal do? Well, as you can probably tell by the name and by these images that are flickering in the background, desktop metal is, well, it deals with metal, right? This company is a 3D printing machine manufacturer. Those 3D printing machines that they manufacture are not like the ones that you've probably seen. You know, you could buy a printer today that would sit on your desk and it could print plastic filament that just goes line by line, it takes a couple of hours to print a little figurine, but that figurine is cheap and plastic. Desktop Metal make 3D printers for, well, you probably guessed it, metal. They do all kinds of things like stainless steel. You can print gold, you can print silver, so you can get into the jewelry business. But they also do bio products as well. So this company can print dentures and all kinds of weird and kooky things. A recent announcement is that they can now print on wood as well. And we'll get to that one in just a second because that's a part of this story that I really like. But yeah, when it comes down to it, Desktop Metal is a 3D printing machine manufacturer. It just so happens that those machines are a lot more advanced than the ones we typically see today. So let's just talk about wood for one moment. And it sounds like a strange product, but reading about this more and more has, has really opened my eyes to what could be done with this kind of product. So Desktop Metal, they now have a company that's like a subsidiary, and it sounds weird to have subsidiaries when you only make $16.5 million in revenue, but they have a bunch of them, some acquired, some built internally. Anyway, subsidiary called Forrust. Forrust, like Forrest, but with a U in there. Forrust is a 3D printing company that deals with wood. You know, like, how do you 3D print wood? And this is the really cool part. They take sawdust and they take other byproducts from the paper and, and wood milling industries and they use those to 3D print wood. Now, I don't know about you, but that should set off like, ding, ding, ding. Wood is expensive today. Wood is, it's, it's crazy expensive. It's also bad for the environment too, right? You're cutting down trees, maybe not replacing them. What if we could use less trees, but still build wood products? Well, that's what Forrest is trying to do by using sawdust. So sawdust, as it is today, is, is generally a waste product. Sometimes it gets burnt off. Sometimes it's thrown in landfills. You know, there are some uses for it. But for the most part, this is a product that is destroyed, buried, whatever it is. Well, now in comes Forrest that says, give me your sawdust. I'll build products from it. And as you can see on screen now, here are some of the products that they're making just as, as like demo applications to show you what this can do. They sell them, you can buy them. But another cool thing about this is, is that it's an additive process, right? So like 3D printing that you've no doubt seen, it builds layer by layer. Well, you can now do that with wood, build layer by layer. And I don't know if you know anything about woodworking, you know, I don't, don't take that the wrong way. I know nothing about woodworking, but I do know that it is difficult to work with wood and subtract stuff away and make weird and kooky shapes with it. But if you are working from an additive process, you can build shapes that literally can't be made with carving out wood. So the additive process of adding material on with wood is much better than the subtractive process of building things that just can't be built with wood, right? So it's opening new avenues for design, for, for different uses for wood. It's just a really interesting product. It's going to be a really interesting industry, even, especially and even more so if, if they can take byproducts, you know, byproducts of an industry that would usually go to waste and instead take those and, and build something cool with it. 
So yeah, this is really in its infancy though. It was, you know, a news story a couple of weeks ago about Forest. So there's still plenty more to come, I'm assuming. But it's definitely something I'll be keeping an eye on just to see how how it shapes the thinking about building new products going forward, especially when it comes to wood. So wood aside, as I mentioned, they also deal with metals, with bioproducts such as dentures or other bioproducts that, that could be built and, and attached to the body. You know, all kinds of different things could be built with 3D printers. But the problem is today is that 3D printers are slow. They are difficult to get working. You can't really go and mass produce items with 3D printers. And additive manufacturing in this way is, you know, it's, it's not seen today as a way that you can just build something. But that's where desktop metal, that's where they say this is going to change. Today, you might be building prototypes with a 3D printer, but desktop metal's goal is to make it so that your entire production process is done on 3D printers. So in their own documentation, they say, you know, additive printing today is additive manufacturing 1.0. This is the, the first version. You use it for prototyping. But in the coming years, over the next decade or so, we'll move to additive manufacturing 2.0, where businesses will use these machines instead of, you know, the long conveyor belts. They'll use these printers that can print a thousand products, uh, 10,000 products, many thousands of products, rather than having to, you know, design it, 3D print it, get approval, build a machine that can actually now build it. Instead of doing that, we will use these machines going forward. And it's right there that I just wanted to turn back to, I guess, the, the entire landscape for a minute. 3D printing is not new. 3D printing has seen bubbles in the past where, where assets just fly up and the cost of them is outrageous. You know, we've seen companies like Stratasys and 3D Systems that were, were in just bubbles and they've since crashed back down. Things have been no different for desktop metal, although this company does a lot less than, than the peers like 3D Systems and Stratasys. Those actually make products that are used and they generate a lot of revenue. Desktop metal really doesn't generate much revenue, $16.5 million. And then to add to that, they're not just competing against these big companies like Stratasys and 3D Systems. There's also a bunch of newcomers seemingly almost every week. You know, just looking at other companies that are coming to market via SPAC, like Desktop Metal did, we've got Shapeways, Velo 3D, Mark Forged. And then just yesterday, I'm recording this video on May 20th, but yesterday, May 19th, $150 million was raised by Formlabs. Now that's SoftBank put in $150 million to Formlabs, another company that's entering the 3D space. Well, I guess has already entered if they're raising that much, but is raising that at a $2 billion valuation. So there are no shortage of competitors in the space, and it's going to be difficult to pick a winner at this point in time. Now you can look at things like what kind of patents does this company have? What kind of markets is it heading after? And when you're looking at it from that point of view, desktop metal is, is tackling the right things. You know, they're acquiring companies, they're acquiring patents, they're tackling the things that they should be tackling at this stage. But can they convert that into profitability? Will additive manufacturing 2.0 become a thing before desktop metal runs out of money? You know, if, if rates end up going up and it's difficult to get money to continue operations, that could be a big issue. And these are things that you have to look out for when growth investing, right? It's not just about, does this company have a vision? It's, can they finance this vision? Can they finance this vision over the long enough time frame that, that they can bring it to profitability or, or, or at least bring it to, you know, a good level of sustainability? That's a tough question to answer at this point in time. And that's not the goal of this video, right? The goal of this video is just to explore this company and see what they do. So I hope that I've covered that at least some amount. Yeah, you know, I'm a big fan of what they are doing. I enjoy looking at this, the, the innovative technology that they're putting out. And I'll continue to follow Desktop Metal and, and its peers to see how 3D printing evolves in the future. But my prediction for the industry, you know, I think we definitely move towards this additive manufacturing 2.0 that Desktop Metal talks about. I think that maybe in the space I'm sitting in at some point in the future, maybe 10 years from now, there'll be a, a machine that is about this size that could just print a thousand of something over the next 15 minutes to both not keep inventory, but also to satisfy a need. That would be cool, right? If in the, if in the future we can reduce waste by only printing what we need, whether it be with wood or gold or sheet metal, these companies are focusing on that. They're focusing on, on changes that we need as, as, as a human race, right? So 
That's why I chose to look at desktop metal today, and I hope you enjoyed this video. But yeah, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I'm talking about innovative companies, innovative industries, business tech, those kinds of things. Subscribe link is below. I would appreciate it. And if you haven't, please leave that thumbs up on the video. I would appreciate that too. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.